Till now we know much about viruses which causes different types of the diseases but this coronavirus is something different and surprising which is life threatening. When I first heard about this disease SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome caused by coronavirus, I was really shocked. When doctors observed the x-ray photographs of the patients, they could see it is similar to pneumonia. The same symptoms it was showing, like with a severe fever it will start with cough and cold. But it is becoming a life-threatening disease and no antibiotic is working for it. But for a researcher, nothing is impossible and will surely definitely outbeat this disease within no time. But in my morning, my duty is my morning shift. देखे थे केस है ये केस ये डिसीज़ है बोलके डॉक्टर्स भी बोल रहे थे लेकिन मैं बोरा सोने करा पेशेंट से भी यही बोला आपको ये डिसीज़ नहीं है आप डरने की ज़रूरत नहीं है और आप अच्छे हैं आप कभी फील नहीं होना और आप अच्छे रहेंगे और रिपोर्ट भी अच्छे आएंगे आपके बोलके मैं उनको ये ब Viruses have challenged the human race several times and some of the classic examples that we know are that of the smallpox which has challenged mankind many times and also the emergence of relatively mild virus like the influenza which started emerging as a more virulent form and causing large number of deaths which occurred in the uh, early 19th centuries. Periodically, viruses, because of their ability to change themselves into more virulent forms, man has always been kept guessing until a more deadly form of the virus emerges. The first easily transmittable disease of the 21st century is now prevalent in 29 countries. The Indian Civil Aviation and Port Authorities have stepped up the vigilance against the killer coronavirus by screening all international passengers. The government chest hospital at Hyderabad has a get up to keep the SARS patients in isolation for treatment. In the second week of April 2003, one of the SARS suspects was admitted here. The patient in question is a businessman. Rafael Colarkel Anthony is a resident of uh, Australia now. His native place is a Kotayam, from where he has come. And uh, he has traveled, he is a businessman, he has traveled from uh, Australia to Hyderabad via Singapore. During the tr uh, his travel, he stayed 22 hours in Singapore and reached the Hyderabad airport. So in the flight, he was sensitized by the crew that anybody having symptoms of uh, cough, fever, chest pain, breathlessness, uh, diarrhea, rash, etc. They should report immediately to the SARS screening team at the airport of Hyderabad. Immediately, the uh, uh, RK Anthony has reported there and then got screened. He was shifted in ambulance to AP Government General and Chest Hospital for further evaluation. The mysterious new killer disease 
For want of better name is called SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome by World Health Organization. This disease is caused by a virus called coronaviruses of paramyxoviruses. This virus produces severe acute manifestations of high-grade fever with chills and rigors, chest pain, breathlessness, uh, watering from the nose and rash, diarrhea, sometimes confusion and the patient may have breathlessness. These are usual manifestations of severe acute respiratory syndrome. Testing for SARS In the first stage, samples of blood, urine and smutum of the suspect are collected. A cutting-edge technology is being used to detect SARS. The virus has certain unique stretches within a gene. This is used to detect its presence. Tags called primers mark the unique gene stretch in a viral RNA. The RNA, primers, certain enzymes and chemicals are placed into a PCR plate using the polymerized chain reaction. RC PCR. The unique pieces are amplified sufficiently for detection. The amplified genetic material can be labeled with a dye and viewed under ultraviolet light. Viruses are submicroscopic particles which cannot be viewed under an ordinary microscope. They are composed of proteins and nucleic acids and in some cases lipids. They are about 100 times to about 1000 times smaller than that of even a small bacterium. Viruses infect almost all living organisms, which includes microorganisms like bacteria, plants and animals. There are two properties which make viruses very dangerous and very capable of spreading very rapidly in the environment are that they are not susceptible to any known antibiotics or drugs. The second property is their ability to rapidly multiply in the living systems in which they are able to multiply in several thousands and thousands per single cell gives them an ability to change their virulent characteristic features. It is reported that the epicenter of SARS is Gogdong province in China. A local man who suffered from kidney disease after his early discharge had visited his family in Amoy Garden apartment complex. He passed the disease to his brother and sister-in-law, sparking a virulent outbreak among residents. The disease has spread to other people through sewerage, polluted water supply, household pets, rats, cockroaches and contaminated objects affecting hundreds of people. Coronavirus which is an RNA containing small virus which is relatively known to cause common cold now has emerged as a killer virus. Compared to DNA containing viruses, RNA viruses are very unique in that when they multiply there is nothing like a repair mechanism which helps it to actually get the same features of that of their parental virus. Because of this, there is large number of mutations which accumulate out of which the chances of a more virulent, a more successfully replicating virus which can emerge. Viruses in general are host specific and also inside the host they also are tissue specific. For example, a virus when it infects a human being. One of the examples that we can take is that of a coronavirus. 
which typically infects the upper respiratory tract which gets into the system and at a cellular level the outer coat of the coronavirus has a specific protein or a ligand which is identified by the host cellular receptors these receptors are responsible for attaching the virus to itself and then slowly virus gains entry into the cell by a process of endocytosis which is normal to most cellular mechanisms once it gains entry into the host cell the outer coat of the virus is removed inside the endosome then the virus particle which is referred to as a capsid which is a protein enclosing the genetic material is released into the cytoplasm in case of the rna viruses like the corona virus the rna is then translated into proteins of the virus which help the virus in rapidly replicating inside the cell as the number of the viral particles start growing they mature out into a completely infectious viral particle by budding out of the cell many times they break open the cell and cause damage to the tissue in case of corona virus it is the lung tissue which suffers the damage and the lungs are very important for our uptake of oxygen and once the cells get affected it could result in respiratory arrest one is it's a large number of viral particles which emerge from the cells which will cause the disease symptoms of the upper respiratory tract and uh, the symptoms like fever and so on which emerge out of this kind of replication of the virus in the host cell is a kind of a response to that of a foreign agent based on the symptoms the virus infection is initially diagnosed very broadly but the actual damage which is done is because of the rapid replication of the virus into large number of viral particles and the immune system only responds after seeing sufficient number of viral particles which has emerged out ultimately the survival of a human being depends upon his innate ability to combat this large number of viral particles with the help of his own immune system when a patient sneezes or coughs these are spread into the atmosphere like an aerosol into large surface areas starting from few feet few, few meters once outside a living cell the virus is not capable of independent living but it remains alive for quite some time depending upon the virus for example corona virus is sub, is capable of staying infectious almost to few hours when there is sufficient amount of moisture available but under dry conditions it infectivity is lost but people are unable to understand how this virus with a relatively short half life outside the living cell is able to infect large number of population these studies still remain to be solved the corona virus is airborne and it is creating havoc worldwide I must share with you my worry that this virus is far more dangerous than AIDS. In the case of AIDS virus, we know how it spreads and we can control the spread. It spreads by blood transfusion, by using infected needles, by heterosexual or homosexual intercourse without using condoms. And we can take steps to prevent each one of these. These steps are very well known and that's how new infections have been brought down in Europe and in America. Here, 
we have no way to do this because uh, you could be sitting to a person next uh, in a cinema hall in a in a in a uh, plane and the person sneezes or even talks and you could be infected and there is no way f for anyone to prevent this from happening that is why i am very very afraid that uh, uh, this virus could cause havoc around the world uh, i would imagine that uh, there may be no way to prevent this from happening because how can you prevent people from coming together uh, we would need to find a very early very very early we'll have to find the cure uh, for it we'll have to find uh, uh, agents which will help you uh, either fight the viral infection by destroying the virus or simply uh, somehow aid your own immune system as per the world health organization's latest report cases and deaths have been reported in 29 countries so far the total number of cases worldwide stand at 7699 and the number of deaths at 598 china tops the list with 271 deaths 5163 having been affected followed by hong kong with 234 deaths out of 1703 cases and singapore with 28 deaths out of 205 cases outside asia canada is worst affected with 23 deaths out of 142 cases but the death toll and the number of cases are rapidly increasing in India, so far the reported cases are at Goa, Pune, Jaipur, Bangalore, Kolkata, Ahmedabad and Kochi. But fortunately, the disease is not fatal so far. In the meantime, the SARS suspect that Hyderabad received his medical reports. All blood samples were sent to National Institute of uh, Virology at Pune and they reported they, done, they have done polymerase chain reaction test and this test has revealed that there were no metanemonic virus or coronavirus uh, was found in this test. So the test was reported as negative for SARS virus. We took an X-ray test and uh, clinical examination was found, uh, done and lungs were found to be clear and x-ray chest was shown to be normal. So there was no evidence of SARS pneumonia was found in this case. Your report has come ready to, I will discharge you in the evening. And uh, I wish you all good luck and all the best for you. Patients are discharged once the cough and fever subside. But there is no foolproof treatment available right now. As quarantine of SARS positive patients is voluntary, it is difficult to implement. So there is a scope for the virus to spread. The risk factor. Patients may not show all the clinically defined symptoms. A negative test result does not rule out SARS and patients given the clear signal may not be free of the virus. Symptoms may not show till 10 days after infection. So screening of international passengers may fail. Cough droplets from a SARS victim could spread to many others in bus or train. The unusual origin, spread and potency has raised other opinions too. From what has appeared in the newspapers, it seems that uh, the sequence of the genetic material of the virus contains sequences of uh, large sequences of, of two separate viruses. And that's why we call it a hybrid virus. And uh, such a hybrid virus, as I said earlier, is very unlikely to arise by itself.
in, in nature. I would say the probability is virtually zero. So there are viruses which we can say we definitely uh, have arisen from the uh, genome or genetic material or, or DNA uh, of uh, animals, including human beings. That is, these sequences have become autonomous and, uh, and that's how these viruses have been created. The other group of viruses that we don't know how they have arisen. Uh, to that belongs, uh, as I said, HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. And I think the, the virus that causes SARS would uh, also seem to belong uh, to, to that group in the sense that it is, uh, there are no sequences which seem to be homologous to sequences found in human beings. But unlike HIV, uh, uh, the origin of which we do not know, it certainly was not created in the laboratory because we know that the human virus uh, perhaps came from uh, the uh, virus, the similar viruses found in, in uh, lower animals. But in the case of SARS, uh, its structure is such that uh, it's extremely unlikely to have arisen in nature. And I would place a bet that uh, it uh, just came about in the laboratory. But the World Health Organization says it is not an act of biological warfare. The opinions may differ and may be debatable. Whatever may be the reasons of its origin, the need of the R is its prevention. As the age-old saying, prevention is better than cure. If SARS is prevented from entering the country, fighting its spread could be that much easier.